All right. Um, as I was saying yesterday, I will be back to review a 1994 sci-fi horror film called Death Machine. And well, let's get started. Um, the opening, to be perfectly blunt, is a little chaotic. Um, it's kind of uh, I, I I honestly got lost. Um, it might get fixed with another viewing. I don't know. But the first time through, I actually got lost. Um, trying to figure out whether or not this was all flashbacks or whether or not this was happening concurrently. Um, what all was going on, I, I don't know. But uh, it basically, basically it revolves around this uh, large um, weapons group, a uh, mega corporation called um, Chank. Interesting name, huh? <laughs> Which uh, um, is manufacturing these uh, weapons, and one of them goes out of control and winds up slaughtering a lot of people. And there's protests in the streets about it. Uh, they bring someone in to investigate it, and um, turns out that one of their scientists. Now, see, here's the thing where it gets really. It loses its flow big time because they bring this woman in to investigate this stuff, but she kind of winds up in a relationship, sort of. It's faked on her part. Um,. It's, I mean, it's not even a relationship, per se. It's just, you know, an interest, and he really reads into it. So in his mind, it's... Anyway, um, but, yeah, it, he's basically gone crazy. He uh, He's played by uh, Brad Dourif, too, and he... Um, I'm going to get into him in a minute, but wow. <laughs> and um, long story short, uh, he gets really pissy that people are trying to take his... Uh, you know, shut down his work, uh, not allow him to receive credit for it, not see the mastery of it. Um, it it's a pretty, honestly, um, typical plot, you know. You can't shut me down, I'll show you, I'll show all of you, I'll unleash my creation upon you and wreak havoc. And it's a creation in the form of a ten-foot-tall killing machine, literally. It is a machine... Uh, the clawed feet, clawed hands. It almost looks like a giant, uh, well, uh, well, kind of a cross between the giant Velociraptor and the mini Tyrannosaurus Rex, with more dexterous, sharp fingers. Um, it, it's odd. I, I mean, it's got like the body shape of almost like a dinosaur. It's got like the uh, sort of humanoid hands with these razor sharp claws at the end. But the head actually almost looks like one of the uh, Mousers from the Ninja Turtles series. It's bizarre looking. Um, unique though, I'll give it that. That it's pretty interesting. Um, but I don't know. The, the movie in and of itself, it's really hard to review this thing. Honestly, harder than I thought it would be. It knows what it wants to be. Um, it just doesn't do it. <laughs> it. It goes way too much to formula. Way too much. Um, right down to, you know, oh, well, you know, if your corporation's your bad guy, who's your good guy? Well, the Eco-Warriors. Um, Humanist Alliance, I think they call themselves. It, it's, oh god, it's awkward as all hell. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're almost like an ELF militant wing, and these are the guys we're supposed to afford, you know, the people that burn down people's homes and vandalize them just because, uh, they were once trees. You know, those kinds of people. Um, and yet, at the same time, they almost uh, seem less eco. And I don't even know. I don't know if even the writer knew what he wanted them to be, to be perfectly honest. I... No clue. Anyway, um... But, uh... I, there's really not a whole lot to say about the plot. It is extremely formulaic. Um... You know, um, the deaths, though, I, I will say this. I, I almost wondered if it was trying to be comedy, but there's just not enough instances of actual comedic events for it to be. So if it's trying to be a comedy, it's a sucky comedy. But I genuinely don't believe it. I think it's actually trying to be serious. But there are some deaths in here that are just... I'm sorry, they're just way too freaking hilarious. Um, I mean, first and foremost, the machine feeds on fear, and they definitely kind of go overboard with that. And then at the other times, they, I don't know. Like, uh, supposedly when they actually decide to confront the thing instead of run from it, it gets confused and can't track them. Which, you know, it makes no sense because then later on, this other guy, he's still standing and fighting the thing, and yet it can see him just fine. So I don't even know. 
Um, but that's where the funny death comes in. He's holding the thing back while they go out, and then uh, because it, you know, shut down again temporarily to do uh, internal repairs, um, he, you know, turns around, goes to walk out the great two, forgets to duck, and cracks his head on the um, low hanging ceiling and falls backwards and lays there like stunned, and that's when the thing comes and kills him. It, it, you know, it's. It's unintentionally, I think, funny, because they're playing this dramatic music and everything around it, and it's like, it's hilarious, because first and foremost, you know, he's laying there for a good while before the thing finally gets to him, after it starts back up. And second of all, you know, he just turns around, cracks his head, and, you know, slams backward. <laughs> and it's like, well, I don't know why they didn't grab him and uh, try to pull him back in, but whatever. Um, and, of course, it also has the typical uh, ending. But uh, the ending, this is where Brad Dwarf comes in. The, the guy is definitely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the, uh, the best thing about this movie. Um, aside from the effects, which are actually really good for, uh, for their time. Ni for uh, 1994, the effects are great. They really are. Um, uh, how do I put this? Uh... Well, okay, for a 1994 low-budget film, they're really good. Uh, the animatronics are pretty darn good. You could tell a lot of that actually is like a remote control robot, sure, but it's done really well. Um, the thing, the times where it gets really corny, though, in terms of how this thing moves, is um, when the robot's using its hands for anything, like to slice anyone up or anything, because the, uh, or in the early stages when they're trying to hide what it looks like, because all these really awkward, you know, camera cuts, and then the head's, like, spinning so that you can't get a clear look at it. It's like, why are you doing this? What's, what's the point of that? And then the hands, whenever the hands are going to slice anyone up, they just come right at the screen, and then they're like... <laughs> like that. And you can tell that it's, like, fake hands, and there's somebody at the screen, you know, pulling triggers on these things to make them work. But, oh, uh, it's, it's funny, but... <clears throat> But honestly, um, there are a few things about it that uh, kind of take you out of it. That, that's just one of them. But another one are the character names. Um, like, um, they, they named all these characters after famous, like, directors and whatnot. Like, um, or things from other horror films. Like, uh, the eco-warrior hero is named Sam Raimi. Um, the, the dude, one of the guys who, uh, one of the uh, scientist guys is named John Carpenter. Um, the head of the company is named Scott Ridley. Um, two of the characters are separately named Waylon and Utani. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you can argue that this is supposed to be a tribute and whatnot. It's just that it's so blatant, and it, it, a lot of times it's just not even clever, and it just takes you right out of the movie. It really does. Um... I mean, this is something you'd expect to find in a parody, which is another thing that made me think it was a parody, but it's just not. It, it can't be. It's not funny enough, and they try to play things up way too dramatically. Um, there's also, like, four cuts of this film, I guess. Uh, some of them are censored. Some of them aren't. Uh, the director's cut's actually not the longest version, surprisingly. But I guess in some countries this movie was banned um, until they agreed to censor it because I don't know if it ever even got unbanned and then released later. But there were, like, scenes of dead babies and whatnot. And, you know, it, they just went way over the top with that. But, um, yeah. Apparently the director never actually had a version that he was satisfied with, including his own cut. So that explains that. But... <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. But, uh, yeah, Brad Dourif, honestly, is the highlight of this movie. He He's over the top, very much so at times, but, you know, he's written to be pretty over the top. Uh, he's also, you know, he, he portrays even a calm psychopath very well when he's supposed to be going psychopathic, but he just does it so calmly. It's amazing. Um... And then at the end, the ending, honestly, is his strongest point because he shows so much range, you know, he's got this whole, you know, quiet, you know, begging side, and then this whole, you know, out, you know, just genuinely indignant, angry, and then this screaming psychotic thing, and he keeps alternating between them, 
as he's being left in the room with this creature that can sense his fear, and as soon as he's scared enough, it's going to come on and kill him, and he knows it. And, um, you know, and, uh, you know, he's freaking out about it, but trying to keep himself calm at the same time, and you can tell, and it's just really good performance from the guy. It really is. Um, but it's definitely not enough to save the movie. It's, it's... The biggest problem with this movie, I think, is that not that it's necessarily bad. I mean, there are movies that are bad that are still actually enjoyably bad. You know, they fall into the category of so bad it's good. But uh, this is not one of them at all. Uh, this just honestly, more often than not, falls under the category of just plain boring. Um... You know, it's it's formula, and it's badly handled formula, but it's not, like, exploitedly bad, you know? It's not a case of, oh, we don't, we got a turd here, let's exploit that fact. No, it's just boring. It's It, it tries to take itself way too seriously. I, I really could not bring myself to even enjoy how bad it was. It was just mostly dull. So, uh, overall, I think I'm going to have to give this movie a uh, 4 out of 10, and uh, if you want to give it a shot, um, I'm going to have the Netflix link down below. I, I don't know where else to watch it right now. I really don't want to look. I honestly wouldn't recommend you even try it, but, you know, if you want to on your own, you're welcome to. Um, also, um, like I said, I'm going to be doing movies like this that a lot of people would pass over thinking they're, you know, cheese balls or whatever, so uh, if you... Uh, happen to know of one that you'd uh, like me to review, um, you know, short of the uh, softcore porn side of things, which some of those do exist on there, sadly. Um, you know, uh, let me know, uh, PM it to me, um, I'll check it out. Um, preferably on that, you know, I, I hate doing those whole uh, video streaming sites, I can't trust 90% of those, so... Uh, but at any rate, um, there's that, and uh, I will see you guys next time with another one that may or may not be uh, worth your time. So, see ya.